Okay, in this video we're going to look for evidence of length contraction. So we're going to try to explain these cosmic muons and how they decay between these two detectors but using length contraction. Okay, firstly we're going to do it without special relativity to see what we expect to happen. So we have a bunch of muons here represented by these particles here and they're moving a bit downwards at a velocity of 0 0.99 times the speed of light. So the time it takes for them to move from detector 1 to detector 2 is, is what we're going to work out first. So if, if they have travel distance of 2,000 2, meters, if we divide it by the speed, which is 0 0.99 times the speed of light, the time it takes for them to travel between these points is approximately 6.73 microseconds. So how many half-lives are in 6.73 microseconds? So if we 6.73 divided by the half-life, which we measured in the lab, so if we get approximately 4.49 half-lives. Okay, so if we have 100% at detector 1, how much is left over at detector 2? So if we do 100 times by half to the power of the number of half-lives, so 4.49, so we're basically multiplying by half 4.49 times. This gives us 4.5%, which isn't that much. So we expect that most of the mu ones from uh, the first detector don't make it, make it to the second detector. It turns out this isn't what happens. Okay, now we're going to see if we can explain correctly what happened, but using special relativity and length contraction. So the half-life is still 1.5 microseconds. That's in a frame at rest with uh, respect to the muons. And the dis distance between the detectors for someone who's standing next to the detectors at rest is 2 kilometers. But what is the distance between the detectors according to the muons? Now to the muons, the detectors are whizzing past them. They're moving. So there's going to be some length contraction of the distance between the detectors. The, the distance between the detectors is going to appear shorter. So to calculate this, I'm going to work out gamma first. So gamma is still using 0.99c. You should get 7.0. 89 okay so now that I'm going to contract this length I'm going to see so from the perspective of the mu one is going to be shorter so I'm going to take that 200 2000 meters which is 2000 uh, two kilometers and divide it by 7.089 so from the perspective of the mu ones it will only be 282 meters between the two detectors how long does it take for uh, the detectors to go past. Now remember the detectors are moving past at 0 0.99 times the speed of light according to the mu ones. So I'll just use the dis uh, speed equals distance over time formula. So if I take the distance divided by the speed, I get 9.50 times into the minus 7 seconds, which is 0 0.950 microsecond. So as you can see, this isn't even one half-life. So how much of a half-life is it? So if it is 0 0.950 divided by the half-life, you get 0 0.633 half-lives. So if, if I take, if we assume there's a hundred percent arriving here, if you take the 100% and you multiply by half the power of the number of half-lives, you get 64.5%, which is of course much higher than the 4.5% which is predicted. And it turns out this was true, that the more muons reached the bottom detector than that was expected, and it could only be explained using special relativity.